start, we are very, very happy to introduce Dr. Frank Berthe, Senior Livestock Specialist from the World Bank. Hello. Hello, Dr. Frank Berthe. Good, good morning, good afternoon. I hope you, you can hear me very well. I hear you perfectly. Very welcome. Fantastic. So, thanks a lot for the invitation to, to participate to this um, uh, summit. This is, a, this is a great pleasure for me. Um, I, I must also congratulate uh, um, the, uh, the team, or the teams, I should say, for the pre-summit report. That is uh, uh, a gold mine uh, of information. Um, and, and reflections, and uh, and and uh, I would like also to say that I enjoyed very much the first session uh, this uh, uh, this morning. Um, I'll spend a bit of time to uh, tell you about how uh, we 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 look at at AMR here in the at, at the World Bank, and how we think that uh, we could address maybe uh, this uh, this uh, very complex issue in uh, uh, the specific context of low and middle income countries and my reflections are, are, are those from uh, of course an international financial institution. Um, but uh, um, since Eldar Shafir has, uh, has mentioned the uh, attention deficit that uh, most of us uh, may suffer, I will, uh, I will jump uh, quickly to uh, a few key points I would like to make uh, uh, today. And uh, to start with that, uh, maybe it's not just about the money um, and it's not just about uh, the knowledge. Of course, uh, we, we would need more uh, uh, money, uh, but uh, uh, the real question is, is how we're, we're doing the best out of the money that, uh, that we have. And of course, um, more knowledge would help, but, uh, but the, the, the reality, and we've heard that this morning already, is um, we know enough to know that we have to act and also uh, we probably uh, also uh, need to, to we, we know what needs to be done so uh, just let's do it. Uh, and and the, the, the other point I would like to make today is that um, success in curbing AMR uh, will not take us, uh, will, will take a serious change um, in, in, uh, in our approach. And um, we should not repeat what uh, doesn't work. And it's probably not more of the same that, uh, that we need. So it's not about upscaling. Uh, and I will try to demonstrate uh, uh, those two points in, in the coming uh, slides. Uh, we've heard uh, from uh, autocars today that, um, that there is momentum. And from uh, the Minister of Health uh, right now, um, we've seen this momentum growing uh, from the first WHO uh, global report, uh, then the, uh, uh, the strong stand uh, at the 2015 World Health Assembly uh, of WHO, and then this uh, uh, breakthrough uh, with the, the O'Neill review uh, in, uh, in, in UK, and, um, and since then um, uh, a number of, of uh, reports. The, the bank is uh, part of this uh, a coalition of uh, of, of uh, the willing, and um, and we've uh, we've produced two pieces in terms of uh, analytical work. One in 2017 that was essentially um, an economic report on on AMR, um, and two is uh, 2019 another report uh, that was more on the how uh, than uh, the why of of, of the question. And in this 2019 report, uh, basically, we have two major findings. One is that AMR needs to be reframed as a global development issue that cannot be solved with technical solutions alone. Um, and two is what we call AMR sensitive interventions are often uh, the most cost effective way, um, especially in low and middle income countries to overcome this underlying weakness uh, in, in systems and, and enabling, establishing enabling environments uh, for a successful reduction of, of, of risk um, due to unnecessary use and over-reliance on, on antimicrobials. Um, this is, a, this is a, for the bank, a fairly new way of, of thinking AMR. 
I would like to share with you uh, um, a graph, and um, um, I have to say that uh, uh, this is adapted from um, a, a book by Ol McDonald and, and O'Neill published in 2018, but I find it extremely powerful. It shows the rate of death from uh, uh, tuberculosis and other respiratory infections in the U.S. before and after the beginning of what we call the antibiotic era. Uh, we put this uh, uh, very uh, uh, arbitrarily in 1947 uh, or 45, and it's, um, um, it's, uh, it's probably not exactly true, but we can see that from uh, the, the early uh, 20th century, uh, we've seen a constant decrease of uh, um, um, those uh, uh, deaths from uh, respiratory diseases and, uh, and including uh, tuberculosis. And, and part of that is because of hygiene. Part of that is because of uh, uh, um, um, actions that we, we're doing now with COVID-19, such as uh, distancing or uh, uh, hand washing. And so uh, it shows that uh, we, could, we could do a lot uh, uh, with, um, with non-antimicrobial uh, 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 solutions. And um, on the right side of this graph, we can see that um, countries um, until now, they still struggle even with the, uh, the uh, uh, availability of antimicrobials to reach the levels that we, we see in uh, some high income countries. And here we take uh, US as an example. So part of the AMR challenge is really to address these underlying development uh, weaknesses I referred to and um, identify some of the most cost effective AMR investments across uh, contexts and interventions uh, to be able to prioritize where and how funding uh, should be used for the for the greatest uh, uh, global uh, profit. I wanted to share this uh, slide with with you, and I think it echoes uh, some of the words um, Sally Davis gave us uh, this morning. Um, clearly, uh, AMR is a sustainable development challenge. Uh, failure to address AMR will negatively affect some of the SDGs. Um, that you can see on, on uh, uh, the left side of, uh, of the uh, slide. And progress made on, uh, on, on some SDGs will help us also to contain AMR. So this is a, a two-way uh, relationship. And um, AMR-specific interventions and AMR-sensitive interventions come into, into, this, uh, uh, into this figure. AMR-specific interventions... Um, they, are, uh, they have as a main purpose to reduce AMR. Um, the, pri uh, the primary purpose of AMR-sensitive interventions, it's not AMR control, but they cannot be designed in a way um, they will contribute in in indirectly to uh, combating um, AMR. So we, we need to keep that in mind. Um, so AMR is a sustainable development challenge, but we continue the sentence by saying, that cannot be solved by technical solutions alone. And there again, I mean, this morning we've, we've heard uh, a very interesting presentation by uh, Dr. Shafir, and, and I think that uh, some of the things I'm, 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 I'm uh, going to say uh, will echo uh, this uh, presentation. Um, because antimicrobials are now socially, politically, and economically ingrained in our societies, antimicrobials and their role uh, need to be rendered visible in terms of what we think is uh, the use and governance of antimicrobials across uh, different sectors, uh, industries and institutions or, or countries. Um, in terms of norms and behaviors uh, related to antimicrobials, uh, which refers to uh, people's assumptions, uh, their beliefs, their attitudes in life and, and, and livelihoods around antimicrobials. Um, in human medicine, of course, but also agriculture uh, and many other sectors. And then uh, what we, we think are uh, external trends uh, beyond the system of antimicrobials, such as population growth, uh, migration, urbanization, climate change, uh, organic and uh, inorganic pollution and, and or, or loss of biodiversity. And, uh, and um, uh, maybe today we should add uh, major pan pandemics uh, we see, we see the, 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 the situation with COVID-19. And so this figure 
uh, represents uh, uh, these uh, three areas as a conceptual model of uh, to um, to AMR and tensions around antimicrobials. It's about the the way we think antimicrobials. It's about the way we use antimicrobials, and it's about the the external factors that will have an influence on on uh, on the system. And um, in, uh, in in few case studies that we've done in 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 uh, in, in our uh, countries, we can see uh, those uh, spheres interacting. We've we've uh, we've tried to understand in Vietnam, for example, the use of antimicrobials in animal production, and it's difficult to um, to um, address uh, the use of uh, non therapeutic. Uh, uh, antimicrobials, so growth promoters, uh, basically, if we don't understand that uh, there is actual pressure for uh, production, there is actual pressure of uh, uh, urban population asking for, uh, for animal source foods, and, uh, and the, the, the behaviors uh, of, uh, of farmers are shaped by, by, by that. And so, uh, passing uh, laws or regulations that will uh, simply ban antimicrobials as growth promoters is, is certainly not effective. And what we've seen is, uh, is residues of uh, chloramphenicol, for example, 15 years after the bans. Um, in Senegal, we've, we've, we've tried to understand uh, uh, the reason for uh, low quality medicinal products to be being, being used um, in, in such a high uh, on such a high scale, um, it, it's difficult to, to have uh, uh, clear estimations, but, uh, but it could be between 30% or 50% of, of antimicrobials being uh, substandards um, or falsified. And, and, and there again, um, it is very important to understand, to, to, to understand uh, the relationship of farmers uh, with uh, 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 people on, on, on the uh, uh, live animal markets, uh, their relationship with veterinarians, uh, their trust in uh, governments, and, and the global uh, uh, context of security in the region to understand why it's so difficult uh, to uh, combat uh, um, substandard and, uh, um, veterinary medicinal products and certainly, there again, um, it's not about uh, uh, having decrees or laws or, regu or, or regulations. It's not even about uh, campaigns and communication around that. It's, uh, it has uh, deep roots. And, and so uh, we believe that this is very important to take, to take this, uh, uh, this uh, angle to be able to, um, to understand uh, the difficulties and, and uh, design interventions that would have an impact um, in the countries. Um, for this, we, we, we tend to think in terms of uh, a triangle. Uh, and I think that um, Dr. Shafir uh, already uh, touched a lot of, uh, on, on that. Um, it's about the knowledge, uh, of course. It's about uh, the cost for, uh, for people, but it's also um, the, uh, a matter of, of uh, signal. Um, and I think that we need to work on that, uh, uh, on that part of the triangle uh, because uh, we're not there yet with uh, uh, the capacity of, of, of shifting uh, the, uh, the attitudes. Very quickly, um, I think we have uh, focused a lot on the use of antimicrobials. And it's the main focus of uh, the national action plans on AMR. And probably rightly so, because we know that uh, imprudent and irresponsible use of antimicrobials they, they, uh, fuels the, uh, the emergence of, of resistance. And, uh, and emergence is probably the first component of AMR. But there's a second component uh, that is spread, and I will talk about that. And uh, focusing on controlling the emergence of, of resistance by improving um, governance, reducing misuse of antimicrobials, is desirable, uh, but uh, we believe that it's not enough uh, for controlling the spread of, uh, of AMR. We need also to improve um, systems and infrastructures in order to address this second component of AMR, spread. And most often, and uh, this is overlooked um, uh, by uh, donors and by uh, countries. 
Um, factors that increase the risk of spread, they include uh, poor sanitation, they include lack of access to clean water, poor governance, insufficient public health care expenditures, or poorly regulated private health services. So there's a whole series of, of areas where uh, we could, we could uh, uh, move the needle. And efforts to promote prudent and, and, and responsible use of antimicrobials, again, is not enough uh, for controlling the spread of um, AMR. And this is particularly true um, at the lower levels of economic development. So in low and middle income uh, contexts, um, interventions that um, can act uh, uh, indirectly on AMR, such as water and, and, and sanitation improvements, for example, we term that AMR sensitive actions, uh, they may have a greater impact through um, co-benefits and be more cost-effective in controlling AMR that, uh, than the, the direct uh, interventions, those that we call AMR-specific interventions. Um, so how do we translate that uh, for our countries? Well, basically thinking AMR in terms of emergence and spread, um, we, we need a situational analysis uh, and consider uh, the levels of uh, use of antimicrobials along with the exposure to uh, the contextual factors that drive uh, the, um, the spread. And when we combine those considerations, we come up with a, a typology of, of countries and, and expected uh, levels of, uh, of, of risk. And looking at this table, um, the, the, the type B countries, for example, are probably those requiring our immediate attention given the high level of risk that they uh, present. Um, Countries like uh, um, Senegal, I was mentioning Senegal earlier, uh, where access to quality uh, medicinal products remains a challenge. Um, they, this country would be an example of, uh, of a type A country. Uh, but Vietnam, that is rapidly transitioning um, uh, its economy and agriculture growth, is probably a type B uh, country. And a type C country would be uh, probably uh, Thailand, already uh, uh, one of the champion countries. Um, and of course, in the, in the, in the category D, we would, uh, we would find uh, the Sweden, the Denmark, the Netherlands uh, um, of uh, the world. So we, we think that it's very important to take a country standpoint. And, um, and, and um, having said that, uh, the situation within a country may, may, may vary significantly um, and uh, the example that I, I would take here would be uh, uh, some poor peri-urban communities. Uh, one example has been, uh, has been in the media uh, in Nairobi and, and Kibera slum, uh, for example, uh, where uh, there's very specific challenges may, may exist compared to the rest of, of, the, of the country. Um, there is no blueprint uh, for interventions and investments. So we don't want to, uh, to use the cookie cutter approach where we would go uh, with the precast uh, programs of, of operations. And there is, I think that um, the way we, we're, we're taking in, in analyzing the situation um, calls for uh, approaches that would be really tailored to, uh, for a best match to the local situation and context. So most type A and B countries um, are at the low end of uh, the development scale, low and middle income countries, um, and, and type B countries are probably the ones requiring uh, our immediate attention, as I said uh, uh, earlier, uh, because of the high level of risk that those countries, they, um, they, they do present. But in any case, um, efforts are, are needed throughout all types, and, uh, and it, it wouldn't be possible to, uh, to leave any group uh, behind. The point I would like to make to uh, emphasize is uh, uh, that I would like to emphasize is, is that for um, type B and type A countries, again, the returns of AMR sensitive interventions would be the highest. And, and so that should focus our, our, our attention. Um, a focus on AMR sensitive agenda doesn't mean that, uh, of course, uh, AMR-specific interventions are not relevant. They are relevant, um, but uh, for, 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 their, for their impact to, to, to materialize, um, the, uh, uh, the, the national situation would need, uh, 
would need um, would need to uh, to change. Now, one very positive effect of AMR specific interventions, of course, is to energize uh, the country and find uh, uh, champions. And because they are AMR specific, um, they they crystallize this uh, this energy. So it's uh, it's probably a blend between AMR sensitive and AMR specific interventions. Um, at the beginning of my presentation, I said that this is not about money, and um, uh, maybe I should uh, justify myself when I when I say that. Um, and I'm not talking about uh, um, the uh, the global community, but I, I will talk simply about uh, the World Bank, uh, IDA IBRD, and um, to 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 say that um, currently our our. Um, Commitment amounts to uh, uh, 241 billion uh, US dollars, um, and, um, and 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 this um, is uh, for 25% um, covering agriculture, water, uh, and health, nutrition, population. So there's a massive amount of investment that is happening now in low and middle-income countries. So if I take a few examples of, uh, of uh, projects, um, the East Africa Public Health Laboratory Networking Project, for example, is a 128.7 million uh, uh, US dollars project. And it does establish a network of uh, public health laboratories and increase access to laboratory services in East Africa um, community, so the EAC. Um, so it serves uh, countries uh, like Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, uh, Tanzania, and, and Uganda. And the main focus of, of this uh, project uh, at the beginning is tuberculosis. And from there, we move to uh, multi-resistant uh, uh, tuberculo multi tuberculosis. And, and so there is a marginal cost for AMR surveillance um, that has been uh, that, that has been uh, identified. And so uh, this is where um, an investment that is not meant to be uh, AMR specific in the, in, in the beginning can deliver dividends on, on AMR. Frank. I will take another one that is uh, uh, a pastoralism project. Uh, now we are in agriculture. We are in the Sahel region uh, covering six uh, countries, Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, Niger and Senegal for about 248 million and um, about a quarter of, the, of this, uh, of this um, uh, investment is on um, improving um, animal health uh, management, the capacity of the national veterinary services, uh, the scaling up of uh, animal vaccination throughout the, 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 the region and uh, the addressing the issue of substandard and falsified uh, veterinary medicinal products. And Dr. Keith, Berti, uh, we, ha we have to wrap up and we yeah, really want this to... This is my last slide. <laughs> oh, and, wonderful. And, and yeah. Keith mentioned, mentioned the importance of, uh, of livestock and, and animal health. And I think this is, a, this is another example where those investments, uh, they have an impact on, on AMR. So basically, um, yes, there is money. Uh, and yes, there is knowledge. Uh, what we need is definitely to change uh, the way we, we the way we work. Um, it remains uh, one one part that may be a bit uh, tricky. That is uh, how to identify the co-benefits, how to measure the co-benefits, and also how to monitor those co-benefits in our investments. And um, I hope that uh, this community can help us to uh, to work into that direction. Thank you very much for your attention, and sorry for having. Uh, been a bit uh, too long. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much, Dr. Frank Berti.